If you miss that old-fashioned fudge of your childhood days, you're going to love today's recipe because we're making traditional fudge. We're not going to be using marshmallows or sweetened condensed milk. In other words, it's not one of those foolproof recipes. Sorry, guys. This is about as real as fudge gets, and it's probably the way your grandma's grandma would have made it. Into a pot, you combine your sugar, whole milk, evaporated milk, and salt. Bring this to a boil over medium-high heat, stirring constantly to dissolve the sugar. Then lower it to medium-low and let it cook until it reaches 200 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine took a total of 35 minutes. Now after about 25 minutes, it's gonna start to change color. Keep an eye on it, make sure it's not burning. Now I heard you, what if I don't have a candy thermometer? How am I gonna know when I reach 240 Fahrenheit? Drop a little bit of that mixture into some cold water. That ball will tell you how hard your fudge will be when it cools. I like my fudge a little firm, so I let it cook for a few more minutes. Then you add in your butter, but you don't stir it in yet. Just let it sit there and melt. And after about 20 minutes, when the bottom of the pot feels very warm, but not super hot, add your vanilla and start beating your fudge. Within a few minutes, it's gonna start to get thicker and lose its gloss. That's a really good sign when that happens. So as soon as your fudge looks like this, you wanna quickly pour it into your prepared pan. So I have here a nine by five inch loaf pan that I've lined with parchment paper. You really do have to work quickly here because the more you try to smooth the top, the harder it is to get a smooth finish. So don't mess with it too much. Now you just have to let this set up in the fridge or even at room temperature for a couple of hours. Now for the chocolate fudge, the beginning of the recipe is exactly the same. Only this time I'm gonna add in four ounces of unsweetened chocolate. Add it right in with your sugar and your milk and salt. I know a lot of people like to use cocoa in their fudge, but I like using chocolate. Cook this exactly the same way you did the vanilla fudge. Do not be alarmed if it looks all split and full of chocolate flecks. That's perfectly normal. Then I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of butter and one teaspoon of vanilla. Beat this the same way you did the other kind of fudge. This time, I'm gonna spread this out onto a piece of parchment paper. I know that looks kind of funny, but it just goes to show that you don't even need a pan to make this. While it's warm, you can shape it however you want. And if you cooked your fudge to the proper temperature, you should have no problems with it setting up. They're gonna taste much better tomorrow than they do today, but we're still gonna cut into this so you can see what it looks like. As I mentioned earlier, I do like to cook my fudge a little bit beyond 245 Fahrenheit, somewhere between softball and firmball stage. It cuts beautifully, it's super smooth and creamy, it tastes amazing. This fudge makes a perfect gift for anyone. And while it might not be totally foolproof, hopefully I've given you enough tips and tricks to make your fudge turn out perfect. So go give that special person in your life the gift of homemade fudge because I think they're gonna love you for it.